Katie, I asked you to find out about sea surface temperatures 100 years ago. How would you go about doing that? You would probably start with Google, right? And you wouldn't be able to find that information because people have documented it. But what if I asked you something about the oceans 100 million years ago? Before humans existed to take measurements or make observations. In these situations, we turn to sedimentary rocks and the records that they hold. One of the reasons that we study Earth history through rocks is actually the same as the reason that we study human history. The past teaches us about the present and can help us understand current problems. This brings me to one of the most serious problems we're currently faced with, climate change. Even though it's happening at a much faster rate than ever before, global warming isn't exactly new. The Earth has undergone periods of warming in the past. One of these warming periods was occurring about 380 million years ago when the sedimentary rocks that I study were deposited. These rocks formed when small particles settled through the ocean to the seafloor. By studying these rocks, I'm trying to understand the amount of oxygen in the oceans at the time they formed. Why? Because a reduction in the amount of oxygen in the oceans, known as deoxygenation, is a serious concern associated with climate change because of its impact on marine ecosystems. To understand ocean oxygen content 380 million years ago, I'm studying an element that is not very well known, molybdenum. Molybdenum has multiple forms known as isotopes. Some of these isotopes are more abundant in seawater than others, and these proportions are the same in all seawater at any one point in time. But these proportions have changed throughout time as a result of variations in the amount of oxygen in the oceans. Now, like how certain texts provide more accurate historical accounts than others, the same can be said for rocks. And when it comes to molybdenum isotopes in seawater, the rocks that I study are like the Gordon Ramsay of rocks. They tell it like it really was. Essentially, the proportion of different molybdenum isotopes in these rocks is the same as in the seawater at the time they formed. So by studying molybdenum in these rocks, we can understand the extent of marine deoxygenation during a previous time of global warming. Carl Sagan probably wasn't talking about molybdenum when he said that you have to know the past to understand the present. But with global temperatures rising rapidly, it's more important than ever to learn as much as we can from previous times of global warming to help us predict and possibly prevent future consequences. Thank you.